Good morning everybody. Good morning. Welcome to life. Welcome to another day in the worship, in the service, in the life of you, the worship of God, the service of the kingdom of God. And in the life of you, welcome to a beautiful, beautiful morning. Wonderful day to be alive. Hope you had a good night. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight on Life Program. This program is built, designed, put together for you out there to help in your journey, to work with you, that we may all, all of us, you, myself, the whole of the whole world and whoever watches this, to empower you, to inspire you towards a fulfilled life. So life is living, inspired, fulfilled and empowered, knowing that everything you face in life, you can and you will overcome, knowing that God has designed you for greatness and you will fulfill your purpose, understanding that when we are here, we are here for a reason and that reason will be accomplished. We are not just here to live and die and go to heaven, we're here to live, fulfill our purpose, and then when we have finished our purpose, we go to heaven. I just read somewhere this morning, Pastor Nick from Zimbabwe writing, saying that you don't stop because you are tired, you stop when you are finished. So you and I will finish our race, finish our purpose before we leave. Nobody is driving you out of here, and you're not living here in a hurry. You will live here when you are done, and when you are ready, because God says, Psalm 91 verse 16, Psalm 91 verse 16, with a long life will God satisfy you and he will show you his salvation. So welcome to God's blessings. The Bible says he daily loads us with benefits. He daily loads us with benefits. So we want to receive, blessed be the name of the Lord who favors those that favor his righteous cause. Let them shout continually let God be praised and glorified who daily delights in the prosperity of his saints. So today, God delights in our prosperity. And this morning we're shifting. Yesterday, we asked a question, what do we think? Um, do we go with dominion the rest of the week? Or do we go with um, um, God's secrets of success? God's success secrets, I call them. And... It was kind of 50-50. When you look at the polls, the people that wrote in, it was nearly 50-50. A bit more on the success side, people said. But everybody, a lot of people wanted dominion. So what we decided to do is we will do, because of the slight edge, we will do God's secrets of success, God's success secrets in the morning. Then in the evening, we will have dominion so that you can, if it's not on CBC, you can join us on Facebook every evening at 20 hours. And it will be, since it's on Facebook, you can catch it anytime. And we'll be teaching on Dominion on Facebook. But in the mornings on CBC, we will teach on, because they won the ballot, okay? That vote won the ballot just by a slight majority, very slight majority. So in being honest and being good returning officers, we're sticking with it. But instead of one winning over the other, we decided that we will have both of them during the week, one in the morning, one in the evening. So you have the best of both worlds. Okay, so please don't forget the Facebook address is scrolling down there. So make sure you tune in at 8 p.m. or catch it whenever it's convenient for you. It's on YouTube. God Ministries TV on YouTube. It's on Periscope. God Ministries on Periscope. And it's on Facebook. You have it on God Ministries as well as on Pastor Jolomi. So you can reach that on Facebook. Or Richard Jolomi David. This morning, since we're going to talk success, let's go to a guiding principle on success. We have Genesis, sorry, Joshua chapter 1. From verse 1 to 8, in fact, if you like, verse 1 to 9, it tells us on success, and we'll pick out our memory verse from there, and then we will go on to our prayer, and we will have prayers of worship, and then we will come back to get inspired from the Word of God, looking at success from God's point of view. Okay, so let's start with Joshua chapter 1. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1, now, after the death of Moses, 
the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all the people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all your days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you, and I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which has sworn to their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left hand, that you may prosper whithersoever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Verse 9, Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you, whithersoever you go. So this is beautiful. It's telling you that success is a partnership between you and God. And it's telling you that to, for you to be successful, you need a lot of courage and you need a lot of boldness. You need a lot of courage and boldness to challenge the things that challenge you, to overcome barriers that have been set, obstacles that are in your way, limitations that we think about primarily in our minds. God says, I will be with you in verse 5, and nothing will stop you. So on God's side, you are unstoppable. The only thing that stops you is fear. He says, be strong and be thou courageous, that you may observe to do all. And your key verse is verse 8. He says, this book, it, verse 8 is the key to 1 to 9, the process. It tells you success. Your success is your responsibility. And your success is based on the observance of laws. So what we're going to be looking at between now and and Friday is the laws. We're looking at the laws. What are the secrets to success? If success was just for a few people, then we would say only a few can succeed. But if success is governed by laws, then everybody can succeed. If we line up to run 100 meters, 400 meters, 10,000 meters, everybody can come first. Everybody can come first. If we all put the same effort and finish at the same time, then everybody gets a gold medal. There is no law that says only one person wins the gold medal. If two people come first at the same time, the same seconds, the same everything, those two people get the gold medal. If nine people get it, if 16 people get it, those 16 people get the same gold medal. It's a law. So life is governed by laws. In the Bible, you call them the wisdom of God. In the world, you call them natural laws, spiritual laws, physical laws, chemical laws, everything governed by laws. What does that mean? It means that nothing is above you. If you can learn to ride a bicycle governed by laws, you can learn to succeed. And God never said here that your success is his responsibility. He says, you will make your way successful. You will have good success. So you are the one to take this. He says, you will meditate upon it. If you remember when we started life, about two months ago, we said that where we started from was Proverbs chapter four, from verse 20 to 23. And we said, they are life to help them that fear them. My son, attend to my word, incline your ears to my sayings, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to them that find it and hell to other flesh. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. So you find, therefore, that your external life 
is a reflection of your internal condition. So success is not what you do outside. You first succeed inside. It says, this book of the law, shall you will meditate on it, shouldn't depart from your mouth. That means you talk it, you think it, you practice it day and night, not only day, day and night. I said, then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So success is your responsibility and the laws is my responsibility to bring it out to you and in partnership with God, we go out there to make a better life of all we want to be. So welcome to this. Thank you for joining us. If you're on Facebook, thank you for joining us. Please share this as far as possible. If you're on TV, send a text to somebody. Invite them to join us this morning. It's going to be a wonderful time. The next three days, we're looking at God's success secrets. And in the next month, from Monday, we're going to be looking at the laws, kingdom laws of prosperity. And of course, on Sunday, we're coming. Don't forget, we're praying and just putting together our minds on the kind of success we want this week. And on Sunday at 10 a.m. in the morning, we start with our praise and worship videos. And at 10.30 to 12.30, we fellowship together in the Word of God, in prayer, and releasing the power of God for your great lives to come to pass. Let us pray this morning as we commit to God and thank Him for bringing us to a brand new day. God bless you. Father, we give you all the praise and glory. We thank you for your faithfulness. There is no God like you. Alpha, Omega, we bless you. You are the beginning. You are the ending. You make the beginning happen. You see us to the end. You never leave us in the middle. We go through water. We go through fire. But you bring us into a wealthy place. You are the sustainer of our lives. The hope, the joy, the grace that takes us through our lives and destiny. We give you praise this morning. We give you glory. For every family, we thank you. Your joy has been our strength. We are not put down. We are not cast down. We cannot be shut down because you are with us. You that keep us neither slumber. You do not sleep. You are our keeper. You are our shade upon our right hand. The sun cannot and will not strike us by day. Neither will the moon by night. You have kept us under the shadow of your wings. We are not afraid of the terror by night or the arrows that fly by noonday because we dwell in your secret place. You that keep us, O God, your name is Jehovah Jireh. You are the God that provides. Before we need it, before we ask it, you send it. Thank you, Lord, that our needs are met because you daily load us with benefits. Day by day, you provide our daily bread. Thank you for life. Thank you for health, for you've blessed our bread and our water. You have consistently sustained our health. You bless our mouth with good things. Our youth is renewed like the eagles. We give you praise. And this morning, we declare your righteousness. We declare your majesty. We declare your faithfulness. We exalt you over our nations and over the kingdoms. We exalt you over our homes. And we submit ourselves to your will this morning. As it is in heaven, let it be done. Let your will be done in our lives, in our country. Let it be done in all that we do today. Glorify your name, O God. We submit and surrender to you now. We declare you God over us. And we bless the nation Zambia as we bless everyone watching from all over the world on social media, on internet. And we say, Lord, go ahead of us now. Let your angels go and let them bring us into the place you've prepared for us. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. We praise you, O God. Lead us now by your spirit. Go ahead of us, Holy Spirit. We follow you as the sheep follow the shepherd. We hear your voice. Therefore, we are not led astray. Glory be to your holy name. Have your way this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Awesome stuff. Good morning, God. We're under God now, so we have liberty. Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Prayer brings you under the Lordship and the reign of God. So it is good to pray. Jesus says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Men and women ought always to pray and not to faint. So you want to stay in an attitude and an atmosphere of prayer, carrying the presence of God, knowing He is with you. Let's worship Him because we know He's with us, and let's just give Him glory for all the beautiful things He does. God bless you. We'll see you after worship.
Welcome back. Welcome back. He isn't he the way maker, the one that makes all the miracles work, the one that teaches us to live a supernatural life. Well, as we said yesterday, reading through the book of Genesis, we said we will come back and we'll look at God's secrets of success. Whenever we talk about this, I will ask you to please look at God as an individual. He made us just like him, so God is an individual. The only difference with God and us is that God is a spirit and we are spirits in human body. God 
oversees the whole world, all the galaxies, all of creation, and you and I are meant to have dominion on the earth while we're on the earth. And that dominion is in an area that God has called you to. So each of us was created for a purpose, and that purpose, if we know it and we live in it, we walk in dominion. That means you become, you, you, you have authority in that area. Also, even if you do not know your purpose, you can take the principles of God. Don't forget, God created everything, so the principles of success are God-made. Okay, the principles of science. No scientist created science. All science is discovered. So science is the study of nature in different fields. You have physics, the study of nature. You have chemistry, study of chemicals, blah, blah, blah. You have all those. So science is an umbrella that carries all that in. And therefore, every time we learn, we gain mastery over things. And the more mastery we have, the more more efficient, the more effective, the more successful we are. So success in life is not based on somebody being better than another person. Success in life is actually based on how much you know that you can apply. So it's not just knowledge that makes you successful. It's applied knowledge. It's not just faith. It's applied faith. And what they bring to you, that knowledge that you apply, is the right attitude and attitude determines ultimately what we become in life. Life is not um, something that you just bring out of a box and you can set up like Lego or something. No. Life is things that you keep trying every day. Every day. You make mistakes. You trip. You stand up. You trip. You stand up until you finish. So what makes us finish is not how good we are. What makes us finish is the attitude that we will not stop until we finish. If you want to look at life and live life by comparing yourself to other people, you will make shipwreck of life. Because you are the only you there is in the world. And because there is only one you in the world, there is only one you created for one purpose that only you can do. Therefore, you have no competition with anybody but yourself. And your competition is you want to be better than what you were yesterday, today. You want every day to wake up to be a better you. That's what you're competing with. That's your challenge in life. And when you become a better you every day, you realize that you're a product, you're a person that carries a solution to somebody. Therefore, your value is when you have mastered your gift and that gift is able to be released into the lives of those in need and billions of people need what you carry yes you so in the business world you call them your customers your one idea the reason you were born will feed the whole world will bless the whole world you have a global continental impact influence life all in this body so your job through life is living a life of personal development every day of your life, applying these laws of success we're going to be giving you. So the laws of success, even if you don't read the whole Bible, we just completed reading the Bible this week for some of us that have been coming since April 1st. On the 24th, some people on 25th, some people on 26th. Don't forget, you are not competing with anybody with yourself. Some people may finish it December 31st. That's their choice. But when you go through the Bible, you realize God has encoded and encapsulated the principles you need for success in chapter 1 up to chapter 2, verse 3. And you start, after you have learned it, you start expressing it from chapter 2, verse 5, and you learn how to live. Success is not deniable they can't deny you success if you will live according to god's principles by the way let me put it out there in the life of success and the journey to success notice i said journey success is not a point you reach it's not an event in your life say i am successful i got there 
Success is a journey. It's a lifetime. It's not a destination. You don't get there and say, I'm successful. You keep succeeding every day till the day you die. As you change the seasons of your life, you change your effectiveness, efficiency. You stop using energy as you start using wisdom. You stop running 20,000 kilometers. You start using a treadmill. Sometimes, you see, you, you just learn. It's a beautiful life. It's a beautiful life. Life is so good. All right? So let's go to chapter one. Please understand success is a journey and is what you do every day. It is not a destination you arrive at. It's a journey for the rest of your life. But when you engage this journey and you leave Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, according to the, all the laws, why do we follow God's laws? Because God made the world. And every day we discover the laws and we apply them. Look at Proverbs chapter 3 so you get that. It says, the Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. Proverbs chapter 3 you're with me there. Look at verse 19. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 19. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding he established it. By knowledge the depths are broken up and the clouds drop with dew. So what did God used to create and sustain? And what is he sustaining the earth with? Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Your best friend, what will make you the greatest, everything you want, is wisdom, understanding, knowledge. So if the Lord by wisdom founded everything, then the job is easy. All I need to do is find out that wisdom. Find out my purpose and find out that wisdom and then I'm good to go. Because the wisdom is not hidden. He says there's a wisdom of God that God reveals to us for our glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6 and 7. He says there is a wisdom, not the wisdom of this world or the wisdom of the prince of this world, but the wisdom of God, which is in a mystery, which wisdom was established to us for our glory. So every time I embrace the wisdom of God, I see glory in life. There, glory means there is a level, there is a standard of awe God has created. If you walk in the purpose of God, your significance and your light will shine. God created you for a level of glory. There is a glory attached to your life that your success brings. I say to people, the greatest thing you can give to the world is your success. The greatest thing you can give to your family, your children, your mother, your father, your nation is your success. Because in your success is everything all your stakeholders will need. We all have stakeholders. Stakeholders are people your life and your actions affect. Directly or indirectly. That person is a stakeholder in your life. You are a stakeholder in my life. Because my life directly or indirectly affects you. So if I bring fake news and I'm not disciplined and dedicated and committed to studying and to praying and to doing what I need to do, I won't bring you the best. I will bring you substandard and substandard is not good enough for you. If it's not the best, then I shouldn't deliver it to you. Therefore, I need to prepare. I need to plan. I need to be responsible. I need to maintain a level of integrity. I have to understand there is no shortcut. That's the secret. And I must do what I need to do. Whether you are there or not, I must assume you are there. And I must work hard to meet you at the point of need, knowing that if you are there trusting me to watch, then I must give my best. You see, it's a social contract. You're a stakeholder in this industry. And therefore, it, it doesn't matter whether I ever get to see you in my life. I know you are there and I know I'm created for you. Therefore, I must do my best. I must do my best. I must wake up. I must pray. I must read. I must learn. I must plan. I must organize. I must sit on this chair and wait for you to get there and do what God has put in my life to do. You are not the one that pays me. God pays me. He's my boss. You are the beneficiaries. So I'm only a steward. 
He's the benefactor. You are the beneficiary. I'm the vessel he's using. I have no holding you account. I hold him accountable. He can move anybody to meet me. It's not my focus to look for who. He says, I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. So it's not my business to go looking for the blessing. It's his business to get it to me. It's my business to get out his product to you. And his product is his wisdom. And if you apply the wisdom of God in your life, I guarantee it. As good as there's oxygen right now, I guarantee you success. So take it seriously. The Lord by wisdom. So what are the three best things you want? Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Wisdom is your spiritual life. You contact wisdom through your spirit life. Understanding is getting an understanding and application. Your mind. So the understanding is the know-how. You know how it works. Insight. So this is foresight, wisdom. Insight, understanding. Hindsight, knowledge. Knowledge. It is your foresight that creates knowledge. It is the wisdom you contact that creates knowledge to bring it to pass. Your spirit wisdom, your soul understanding, your body knowledge. You live in those dimensions. We'll talk dimensions in the evening. So if you get that, therefore, let's see this beautiful, beautiful man, this beautiful woman, this beautiful... Where did they get success from? They all learnt it from God, the author of all success. God created it and human beings have been discovering it and they've been making success of their lives. You are next. Your family is next. Your light will shine. It will shine bright. I'm telling you, you your, 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 your flight will take off. They will see you from glory to glory. As you take your life seriously every day and you teach your family how this time I remember the Ngozas and all the people watching this morning. I know it is appointment in destiny. You cannot engage your family in this kind of interaction and your family goes wayward. It's not possible. One of the greatest investments you do is get your children to understand these principles from when they are kids. The greatest investment in your children's life is knowledge and understanding and wisdom. So get them. Don't be a parent that watches it and they are sleeping. You're not loving them. You're killing them. Get them to sit with you. Get them to take notes. After the program, we're not going anywhere so far. We're still on that partial, social, whatever, lockdown. Ask them questions. What did you learn? How does this apply to your life? Don't just tell me what he said. How does he apply to your life? Let's do some critical thinking. We're not thinking just to pass exam. We're thinking to succeed. So we must have a lot of in-depth critical thinking. And we're not looking at ourselves based on mistakes of the past. We're looking at ourselves based on success of the future. So we understand it's a process. And we know that we are not perfect. So you don't kill yourself or you don't feel too hard on yourself. But you embrace the journey and you take it one day at a time. One step at a time. Don't make it about you. Don't get, your ego makes you feel ashamed. Your ego makes you feel you are not good enough. That's your ego. It's not about you. It's about the journey. Don't make it all about your ego. It is that ego that stops you from success, actually. The ego is not of God. The ego is not of God. So Genesis chapter 1. Look, we're going to read the whole thing up to chapter 2, verse 3. And then we will come back and we will discuss verse by verse. Every verse carries, in fact, close to every word carries a secret. And I told you earlier, the secret to success is this. There is no secret. It's all there. It's all in the open. You wonder why everybody is not successful. The secret of success, there's no secret. It's all in the open. Number two, another secret of success is there's no shortcut. You can't avoid one part to be the other part. You can't. It's called corruption. You can't cheat in life. You can cheat people, but you can't cheat in life. What you sow, you will reap. 
you cannot cheat in life. Life has been here before you came, has seen everybody that came and left, and will be here after you leave. You can't cheat life. The only person you cheat is yourself when you think there's a shortcut and you can circumvent, no, 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 you will face it in future. What you do today is the basis and foundation of your tomorrow. If you don't lay it right, you will crumble and crash tomorrow. If you lay it right, no matter the pressure tomorrow, you will go beyond pressure. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So we have started God's secret of success, God's success secrets, road signs to success. So these are the road signs to success. I'll tell you tomorrow how I came about this and why God would have us teach it and I teach it and I teach it and I teach it. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth is void without form and darkness covers the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning of the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. That means there's a life above the skies. Okay? And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, that's the sky. The firmament separating the galaxies, the worlds. Okay? And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said on the third day, let there be waters under the heavens. Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and herb yield in seed, and fruit tree yield in fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yield in seed after his kind, and tree yield in fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw it was good. And the evening and the morning was the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let there be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth and it was so so sunlight and moonlight started on day four that means calendar as you and i know started on day four that means there have been eons between day one and day three so when people come and say the world has been so many millions of years old there's nothing wrong in that statement it is not contradicting the bible because the days as you know to start counting started on god's day four not on god's day one your day earth one only started in day four and the bible says and god made the true great lights to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also so the galaxies were created by god and it is through the stars that you and I ultimately get life. Because through them we come to get oxygen and all the things that we have. So everything is connected in God's creation. Okay? And the Bible says, And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And so the whole world has been evolving. The whole world is evolving. You are not created by evolution. But the whole world has been evolved. So there is truth in evolution, but you were not created as a chimpanzee. That is important. He says, And to rule over day and night and all that, and the evening and the morning was the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly moving creatures, talking to the sea on the fifth day, and the fowls of they may fly above the earth in the open firmament. Verse 21, And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowls multiply in the skies. And the evening and the morning was the fifth day. And God said, 
let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creeped upon the earth after his kind, and God saw it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So God created man, verse 27, in his own image, in the image of God created he, male and female created them, verse 28, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree which is, which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for food, to every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for food. It was so. And God saw everything he had made. Behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. So God finished creating on the sixth day. And on the seventh day, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and the host of them, chapter 2, verse 1, and on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all the works which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all the works which he had created and made. So there are two things God created, God made. God created, that means he made something out of nothing, and then he made things out of things. So you see the process is two. One is creation, bringing out something out of nothing, and then using what exists to create things, to make things. So that is the process. And when you see this, we start, we go back to Genesis. So we've read Genesis. This is our thesis. This is our text. This is where we are going to learn from for the rest of, till we finish this. Okay? So on this program, we are taking the laws of success, secrets of success, into as we go on, okay? Don't forget, June is Kingdom Prosperity. is going to be on the internet every evening. is going to be here every morning as God leads us. So make sure you connect with us and subscribe on YouTube. Join God Ministries Global. So on Facebook, go to God Ministries Global. On YouTube, God Ministries TV. And on Periscope, God Ministries. You will find us there and you get these teachings. For you, it's absolutely free, isn't it? So let us join hands together to grow. Personal development is the whole journey of life. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Beautiful verse. That itself is a volume on its own. In the beginning, God. So we're looking at God's secrets of success. So don't just look at God as this supernatural being that created everything and everything is easy for him. No, God lives by laws. So the first thing I see that I think is important to you is that there will be no beginning if there is no God. So until you start, nothing will start. The, one of the laws of success is there. You are the most important factor to your success. Win or lose is based on you. Not based on God, not based on the devil, based on, not based on uncle, auntie, government, sister, brother, your boss, your... You know, people don't understand that the people you call bad bosses are the people giving you an opportunity to have a job. So it's not that the boss is bad, it's probably you have a bad attitude. Because without that person, probably you would not get something from where you are feeding your family, yet we, we, are, we fail to see the joy that person brings. Nobody is perfect, but somebody says, if you can change the way you see things, the things you see will change. 
if you can change the way. So the problem is not what you see. Matthew chapter 7. He says, when you remove the log from your eyes, you are able to see clearly. So when you change the way you see things, the things you see will change. So a lot of times it's not that somebody is bad, it's the way you are thinking. If you change the way you see things, don't forget, you see not with your eyes, with you, with your mind. You see with your understanding. So you can see something very good and call it very bad. Ask Eve. Something that would destroy, she thought it was very good for food. Death can be staring you in the face and you embrace it as it's good for you. Think about it. It's not the way life is. It's the way you see life that matters. So in the beginning, God, and what have we said? You are the most important factor to your success. So whether you fail or succeed is up to you. So in the beginning, God created. Notice where God is starting from. Creativity. Creativity. In the beginning, God created. So your world is what you create. You see, a lot of us we abdicate the responsibility for our Abdicate means that you leave the responsibility of your life to somebody outside of you. The only person responsible, we saw it in Joshua chapter 1, the only person responsible for your success is you. Not God. God has done everything he needs to do for you. It is for you now to take God seriously and walk with God and do it the way God says, and you'll realize everything God has for you is already done, whether you know it or not. Before a child wakes up, before the child wakes up, the parent has provided food. Before the child is born, the child is born into a place. You can call it any name. The child has a home. Jesus was born in a manger. He did not reduce his value. You see, where you live in, whether it's big or small, it's just your ego. It doesn't matter. What matters is you have a place to sleep and the place is clean and all that because of you. Where you stay is based on you. Your address is based on your mentality. Whether you stay in Ibex, Kablonga, Mutendere, Kanyama, Chibolia, it's up to you. Nobody chooses for you. It's up to you. It wasn't a devil that puts you somewhere. It was you that chose based on how you're living your life. What does it mean? We'll come to see. If you are going to succeed, you must stop seeding. You must stop giving responsibility of your life to somebody else. Stop saying my uncle. Stop saying government. Stop saying um, no sponsor. Forget that. Stop it. Oh, nobody to help me. Stop it. Who helped them? In the beginning, God. What did God use? Resources he is born with. He has. They are in it. Your creativity, you were born with it. Use it. All around you is resources you can use to improve your life. Someone can say they are throwing stones at me. Somebody else says use the stones to build a bridge to get out of your hole. You can build a wall and keep everybody out against you, you and them, or you can build a bridge to go from here to there. In the beginning, God, may today be the beginning of your success. May today be the beginning of you taking responsibility to change your world. May today be the beginning of your creative discoveries. In the beginning, God created. So if there is a heaven and earth, it's because somebody created it. It didn't just fall from heaven. The sky didn't just fall. The earth didn't just happen. Science tells you somebody intelligent must have done this. Everything connects to everything. You breathe out carbon dioxide. The plants take it and breathe in carbon dioxide. 
They give out oxygen. You breathe in oxygen. It's such an amazing thing. Through bacteria, we create a chloroplast. Through chloroplast, you have photosynthesis. Through photosynthesis, you have food. Through food, you have sustenance. Through you eating, you give food to the earth. It's so sustainable, just recycling itself. It's a system that works on its own. People come and go, that system keeps working. And somebody intelligent created gravity, created all those things. Everything is in place. Einstein came and gave us, I'm loving Einstein this time, came and gave us the theory of relativity. That means you are in a constant state. You are never at standstill. Nothing is ever at standstill because the earth is rotating. Everything is always moving. So it's relative, relative, based on relativity. Your life is based on you. So you must do yourself a favor. Understand the laws of success. We're going to put this in a book for you so that you can give it to your children. Teach it. You will have a curriculum where you can raise your kids yourself with the wisdom of God. That is our responsibility to you. So I hope when those books are out, you'll be able to take them and start putting them in the hands of your kids from when they are kids and teach them in the way they should go, so when they are old, they will not depart from success. You see, people go to the market. Some buy food. Only a few people buy books. So the food will finish, but the knowledge to create food will never be there. You can't eat. The same way you eat food for your body, you must eat wisdom, knowledge for your mind. Because what creates your money is not your job. What creates your money is your mind. What is business? Business is the expression of, what is this? this? This whole creation is the expression of God's creativity. The whole of the earth is God expressing what's inside him out. It's like God is being fruitful. He's bringing forth fruit. This is the fruit of what is inside. So my business, my ministry, my job, how I perform is based on what is inside of me. So if there's nothing inside me, there will be nothing in my life. That's why if there's nothing in you, go and learn. Get things inside you. There are many things. What creates your life? Information. The greatest commodity for your success is information. The greatest commodity. Information st it stimulates creativity. It inspires all your aspirations. Without information, you are stuck because your body was created for information. Knowledge is what moves this machine. What petrol is to a car is what knowledge is to a body. Knowledge is the fuel that makes you go. It causes your combustion, your engines start to move when you start getting knowledge and information. Everything starts to move. All your cylinders start to go like that and you begin to flow because of knowledge. When there is no knowledge, you're neutral. What you don't know, you don't reach out to do. Until knowledge comes, achievement, accomplishment. So God starts with creativity. Where's creativity? The knowledge he has. He's now saying, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? His office is there. Everything you see with your physical eyes came, everything physical in this 3D world came from a 4D dimension. It came from a dimension that you can't see. Your thinking creates your life. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So the world you have is the world you create out of your mind. So from today, you want to be mindful of what you think. Your life is a photocopy, is a picture of what you think and how you think. The way you think drives away people, customers, or draws them to you. The way you think determines how people like you to do business with you or they don't like you and they stay away from you. 
That's the way you think. Your life, we saw it yesterday, Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your life is the way you think. So it means if I change the way I think every day, I will change my life. Think about this. The house you are living in now, why does it look like that? So imagine God. The earth was void without form, isn't it? From verse 2, that house you moved into was void without form, empty. You decided, put that picture there, put that wall clock there, put that this there, put that that there. For example, in my home, there are no pictures on the wall. No pictures at all. I don't take pictures. That's just me. But some people, the whole of the wall, everywhere, if you come to my father's house, walls, pictures, pictures, pictures. Pictures of him and his wife, beautiful wife, my mother. Pictures of the children, pictures of this, pictures of that. If you come to my mother, she has pictures of Jesus everywhere. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mothers are fantastic people. They love Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fathers don't put Jesus. His mother, you want to see Jesus in the house, you are sure it's the mother that put it there. So your house takes the shape and form of your mind. Your bedroom. What's in your bedroom? The way it is arranged. Well, so you see people who wake up in the morning, Saturday morning. A lot of times it's Saturday. Sometimes the house, someone that, there's no housewife, so let's not call housewife. God never created a housewife. Caregiver in the house. She wakes up in the morning and you wonder, why is the house just moving upside down like there's an earthquake? It's because the picture in her mind changed of how her house should be. So she gets up in the morning and because of the picture in her mind, she's changing everything to conform to the picture in her mind. So that house takes the shape and form of her mind. It's the same way your life takes the shape and form of your mind. You like it or not. So stop trying to work on the outside of your life. Work on the inside of your life and automatically the outside will conform to the inside. So you first become successful inside. Work on yourself. You are working on your life. So personal development, personal mastery. The sad thing is this. People that don't make it in life, they go looking for food first. Jesus said, no, don't look for food first. Don't look for what you eat, what you drink first. Mm -mm. Don't put that first. Seek ye first the kingdom, the knowledge of God, the way he does things first. And this will come. Find out God's wisdom first and the way God does his things. And every other thing shall be added. Money, clothes, car, house, husband, wife, everything will come. Follow this side, the wisdom side. The wisdom side is the right side. So what have we looked at? Day one of Road Signs to Success, God's Success Secrets. The first thing we have said, there will be no beginning of anything until the individual starts it. Number two, for there to be a beginning, there has to be a you. There will be no success until you begin. No matter how great the journey, it only is accomplished when you start. You can have great dreams, great visions, great picture of your future. If you don't start, it will never happen. So for God to have anything, he started. It's called the beginning. And something you must know about the beginning, which we've come to for today. For there to be a beginning, there has to be an end. If you don't end the way you are living now, you can begin the life you want to live tomorrow. This week we say you should create the life. Mentally, create the life you want to build. We talked about that on Sunday. You need to create the life you want. What is the life you want? What is the Zambia you want? Let's all have that picture because you build according to the pattern you have. So if I've been one person begging, borrowing, lazy, if I want to succeed, I must decide this must end. I must stop lying. 
I must stop cheating. I must stop begging. I must stop being lazy. I must stop drinking. Nobody's going to stop it for you. If you don't stop this, you can't succeed in this. So for there to be a beginning is because you have decided, I can't be sleeping anyhow. I can't be eating anyhow. I can't be eating other people's food. I want to start buying my own food. I want to start paying my own rent. Until you are tired of living in people's houses, you won't have your house. Until you are tired of watching people's television, you will never own one. If you love people's mattress and people's kitchen, you will never have a gas or a stove that is yours because you enjoy using it. So there has to be an end for there to be your beginning. If you are going to start, that means you must give up and divorce the life you are living right now. It is the way you are living now, giving you what you have now. So if I don't stop this, I will never start this. And that's where we stop today. If not, I will start my next activity for today. And the next program will start. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you glory and worship. We give you praise and adoration all over the world where we are watching this on Facebook on YouTube, everywhere this is going out. Lord, we ask you, be God over us. Teach us as we start this journey to success and you are giving us the road signs to success. Make us successful. Be our teacher, be our coach, be our mentor. Holy Spirit, guide us. As you led Jesus to overcome darkness, lead us to overcome the lives of mediocrity to become successful people. We release blessing over your people today and we go into this day knowing that we have dominion. Blessed be your holiness. Be with us in the evening as we study dominion. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Go have a good day. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Thank you for joining us today. God bless.